The Great Search brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Every single week, Lamar uses our powers of engineering to help you. Yes, you find the things that you need on DigiKey.com. Lady Ada, what is the Great Search this week? Okay, this week um, we had a very popular project, uh, the um, floppy disk USB drive, and it uses a Pi Portal. And the Pi Portal, um, which also I can hold on in the shop, I'll show the Pi Portal. Because this was actually to the computer. Oh, sorry. Yes, it's a computer. Um, because this actually has the fancy DigiKey logo. This was a partnership project that we did with DigiKey, um, but it's a little bit old. Uh, it is long in the tooth, as they say, which is weird because like people's teeth don't get longer. But anyways, um, it's a SAMD fifty one plus an ESP thirty two, and it it could use a re spinning because this is you know quite a few years old now um we can finally get more chips and also like this did suffer a lot from the part shortage because the samd51 wasn't available um and one thing that's kind of neat is the new uh esp32 s3 um chips that are out now so this is like uh the esp32 box let me just go to a dev board i don't think we have a dev kit that has a tft yet so um uh, we have some dev kits. So one of the neat peripherals that's available on um, the ESP32 S3, let me pull up the data sheet, is, oh, this is not the full, this is not the full dev sheet, I think. But one of the interesting um, peripherals that's available on the ESP32 S3 is that it can drive TTL displays. Like, so normally, like on the, um, the Pi Portal, what we've got is um, a, a parallel display that's like eight. Oh, sorry. What we've got here is a um, 320 by 240 uh, mm -hmm. SPI or like 6800 6, or 8080 type display where you're using the frame buffer inside of the display. It has memory inside and you write to it with SPI and you just kind of like send pixels really fast, but you, you, you know, you write the pixels and they're, they're stayed on the display. And um, these displays are great for microcontrollers with low memory because uh, you just say like, okay, I want to write some pixels over in the corner. You flip those displays. There's another kind of display where you write TTL data. Let's call it called TTL data. Um, or dot clock is another way they're called. And so these are, one second, TFT, five inch. So these displays, um, the five inch, like TFT, 40 pin, these, you have to write the data continuously and the VRAM is stored on the device. So they have like less refresh flicker, refresh fresh flicker because you write the entire display at once like you're constantly rastering the display on um, but you have to have something that has a peripheral to do that you can't bit bang it because you have to be drawing the pixels very quickly but the trade-off is you can drive much bigger displays spi displays they tend to max out at like maybe 320 by <clears throat> 480 um, but usually they're 320 by 240. They're they, And once you get to 480 by 320, it actually gets a little slow. It's like tough to actually draw that much display. You get a low frame rate. Whereas with these TTL displays, uh, these TFT displays, you can go quite fast. Fast. So I thought we'd go, or DigiKey, uh, don't forget, they have these cool RGB USB ports. And let's look for TFT display. Okay, so... Uh, a couple options here, but um, even though it's not a, so literally like a TFT is a kind of LCD, but usually LCDs mean something different. Um, still, it would be under the Opto Electronics graphic display. And one thing that's interesting is that DigiKey has a really wide range. So first off, you've got displays like this, and you can even tell it doesn't have that many pins. So you know that this isn't a... Um, TTL, like dot clock style, style display. This is like SPI most likely, but this isn't um, always indicated. So this one's like SPI and then parallel 16 bit RGB. Um, this usually means that it's still like you have to, you know, write eight to six, eight to 16 pins and you, you latch it. So it still has the memory inside. Um, but there should be a couple options that are bigger. So yeah, now once, once you get to like this, when you see like that 40 pin display at the bottom, the 40 pin connector, 
um, these tend to be TTL. So let's take a look at what these are called. Because you can see they're all they're all mixed up together. Like there is, you know, this style, and then there's like this plug-in style, um, the ones with um 40 pins, but this one is SPI. You know, it's it's a little confusing. So let's go over here. So these are called parallel 24-bit RGB, which makes sense because you end up having to have 24 pins for eight red, eight green, eight blue, and then you have V-Sync, H-Sync, dot clock, and then enable, display enable or something. Um, so let's look for other displays that are of, of this type. So I'm actually going to cheat. I'm going to go over here and I'm just going to select color TFT and parallel 24-bit RGB. And then I also only want active. And there's actually quite a few options. And let's sort by price. Um, so 4.3 inches is another popular uh, size. This was really popular for GPS and like handheld gaming. Um, please know that there's also a couple times where you get displays and they have like backpacks and stuff built into them. So just watch out for that. Um, there's resistive touch, which you can see this has kind of like a, a, a like a white outline. Kind of see that like whitish outline. So it's a resistive touch screen. And then if you see this, like a black bezel that's capacitive, and then it has a separate, you see there's like a tail that's the um capacitive touch screen. So a lot of options. You're gonna see 4.3 inch, 5 inch, 7 inch, those are gonna be the most popular. Three and a half, sometimes you see 320 by 240, but I'll be honest, when if I'm doing a 320 by 240 display, I'll go with SPI. So let's go for, I think 4.3 is kind of boring. Let's go for a uh, 400 by 800 display. And let's say it's in stock. I can pick up something today and not in the marketplace. Okay, so it's 35 options. Um, okay, there's one for that we stock. A nice seven inch display is available and there's a few vendors you'll see it pop up a couple times so dlc new haven um nhd micro you can see again this is cap capacitive because there's got the um it's got the secondary tail that's the capacitive chip i'm gonna go with let me see what's available here so let's see if i can get something with you know maybe capacitive touch and i think i want a five inch display oh i think hold on oops i missed miss selected something one moment this i wanted to look for Okay, while you're doing know. yeah, that, um, how do you even write drivers for these? Is one of the questions. Oh, that's a really good question. Um, so I'll, for these, I'll hit some other questions after the second. Yeah, so I think I misselected the touch screen. Oh, okay. Uh, don't forget, you can always um remove stuff at the bottom here. Um, for these displays, the driver is almost always written by the um company that makes the chip because it, in a sense there is no driver. Sometimes you initialize them. Um, over I squared C or SPI just to get them like up and running. But then once they're running, you're literally just like slamming pixels to it as quickly as possible. There is no, I mean, you can set the um, H sync polarity and V sync and you can set that the timing data, but there's no like driver in the same sense that a SPI display has a driver. Okay, so I actually wanted to show a couple more things. So one, um 4d systems has displays but these have a um uart connection so they're not like a raw even though it looks like it's a raw display they're not and then az and new haven and dlc are the ones that have oh yeah this is the one sorry it was resistive not capacitive um az displays has a lot of uh options um available so check them out so they've got um the one that i thought was really neat is they have a high brightness five inch ips display so ips displays you know one thing that you can watch for is when you get if it doesn't say ips like this one doesn't have ips in the title that means it's kind of visible only from like 20 to 40 degrees whereas ips you're going to get like your modern smartphone where like you can look at it from like 80 
85 degrees in every angle. And so the actual display that I, I, I liked is this one. Not only is it IPS, but it's nice and bright, 400 nits. And you can compare different brightness, like the backlight brightness will differ between them. Um, and then this one also, there's another option. I think this is probably maybe a slightly different brightness. But this one for 40 bucks is a really good deal because it's got IPS, um, 800 by 40 pixels, five inch display, and it's got that parallel port, the parallel RGB dot clock. For the ESP32 S3, note that it doesn't have that many IOs. So even though it's just 24 bit color, what you'll do is ground the bottom three or four pins of each R, G, and B. To get yourself 16, instead of 24-bit color, you'll have 16-bit color, which is like kind of good enough for most uses. Um, and then those bottom bits, you just ground them or you tie them together. So you don't need as many GPIOs. So just because a display has, you know, 24 bits of input, you don't actually write data at all 24 bits. You just ground the lower bits, write the upper bits, and then you can, you, know, you can even technically dry these as like 8-bit color, right? You're only going to get three, you know, bits red three bits green two bits blue um but because it's raw driven it doesn't there's no formatting of the data whatever gets written on every dot clock is what appears on the screen so i'm going to make a board that takes the esp32 s3 and has the 40 pin connector plug it in but it's a standard connector and i can swap out different displays to make it a really nice big pi portal so i'm going to pick up one of these nice ips five inch displays and that's a great search where is